Hello everyone, this video will talk you through river Tees, um, specifically from the point Crossfell to North Pennines and then again to the North Sea near Middlesbrough. So this is an example of a river valley in the UK and along this we're going to identify its major landforms of erosion and deposition. So when we break our river down into courses, we break it down into three main parts. So the first course or part of the river would be the upper course, so the point near the source at Crossfell. Then we move further down the river and then to the middle course. So this would be near Darlington on the case of the River Tees in the example we're looking at. And then as we near the end of the river, we reach the lower course, so the mouth of our river, the point where the river enters the sea. So for us in this example, this would be the point where the River Tees meets the North Sea just near Middlesbrough. So if we look at the different landforms we get along each of the courses of the river, they're quite different from each other. So in the upper course, we've got high force waterfalls. So these are found within V-shaped valleys. So quite steep valleys, a bit like the one that I've just drawn on the screen. So these have an approximate 20 meter drop and a width of about five meters. So the rock type here is limestone, so quite soft sedimentary rock. So that would be like the brown rock you can see in the picture of my waterfall here. And our harder delorolite, which is a bit like the grey rock, the hard rock cap that we can see in the picture here. So this grey rock here in the picture creates the overhang. Our rocks are laid horizontally, so on top of each other. Erosion is still happening here when our water flows over this rock. And it's what we call differential erosion. So that means the river erodes the soft rock, which causes it to crumble and break off and splash back, causes an indentation at the base. So that's what we can see happening in the picture here. Our brown, softer rock here is starting to retreat. So continued erosion means that that hard rock cap that we can see here in the picture, the grey bit, loses support then and starts to overhang. Eventually, this rock's going to break off. It's going to become really weak. Gravity is going to pull it down. And the fallen rock then will flow into the really fast water at the bottom of the waterfall. And this can become trapped sometimes and caught up in the flow, which causes it then to drill down into the riverbed. And between that rock drilling down into the riverbed and erosion taking place, a plunge pool, like the big pool of water you can see in the picture here, starts to form. So undercutting continues. So that's when we continue to erode that brown rock, that soft limestone. And this creates a new overhang. So the process here, with all of this erosion, what we call headward erosion, continues. So our waterfall is going to keep moving further back because of all of this erosion and moves upstream. So the rock that would then be left either side of the waterfall, that's the part that forms our steep-sided gorge. So if that's what we've got happening in the upper course and we journey further down the river, we next get to the middle course, don't we? So here on the River Tees in the middle course, our river has more energy and a higher volume of water. The gradient, so how steep the land is here, is becoming increasingly gentle, which means that lateral, so sideways erosion, is allowed to take place. And this widens and deepens the river channel. So because we've got our river eroding laterally, it forms large bends. And those bends in the river, like the ones you can see in the pictures here, are what we call meanders. So the force of the water here is going to erode and it's going to undercut the river bank on the outside of the bend. And where the water flow has the most energy due to decreased friction, on the inside bend, we know the river will then flow slower. So material here will be deposited then as there's more friction. So if we look at my pictures, I can see my outside bends where my sort of green dashed lines are, 
where I've got lots of erosion happening. And then I've got some areas here that have got you lots of yellow sediment on where the river's slowed down and deposited it. So if we move and look at picture B, I've got two bends of the river that are becoming increasingly closer together. So more erosion on those outside bends here is eventually going to cause those to break through. And when they break through, I get a picture like picture C here. So I've got one loop of the meander now, which is cut off from the main river channel. So water here is going to take the fastest flow. So that bit of the river that's going to be the quickest journey for it. But we still get some water that goes around that bend. It's just not as fast as in the main river. So that water that's going around our big loop of the meander here is going to slow down. And as the river slows down and loses energy, it begins to drop or deposit what it's carrying. So all of that sediment gets dropped. And eventually over time what happens is that that loop becomes further cut off from our main river channel. And it's that little bit that's cut off in picture D that we call our Oxbow Lake. So this still has water in it at the moment, but the main river channel flows separately to it. Now over time, our plants are going to colonise in that sediment, so you might see some marshes. But also, if we think years on from picture D, that water supply may well dry up. So the Oxbow Lake sometimes can dry up as well. So if we move to the final course of the river that we're looking at, the lower course, so at this point we reach the mouth of the River Tees. So this is where the Tees then meets the North Sea, which is just near Middlesbrough. So in the lower course of the river, our channel starts to widen. And for the River Tees, it widens when it meets the North Sea at Middlesbrough. Before it meets the sea then, however, the estuary starts to lose its speed okay, and it deposits fine clay. It no longer has the energy to transport its load. So the estuary that we're talking about here with the River Tees is a place called Seal Sands. And that's an area of mud and clay that's created by this deposition. So as the river meets the sea here, it becomes deeper and the sea reclaims the land. So the mouth here of the River Tees has been widened from the original channel. That's what you can see in the picture here. It has a width of about 500 metres to approximately two kilometres in places. So this means that ships are granted access and there's enough water then for boats to be able to get in here and trade at the Teesside Oil Terminal. That's what you can see in the picture here. Or I've just drawn a big circle. So in the exam, they might ask you to use your example of a river valley to explain the formation of some of these landforms. So I hope you found this video helpful.